A Baker County High School senior is in the hospital after collapsing on the tennis courts. Breaking new details on the deaths of a high school soccer player. Uh, the Kennedy High community mourning tonight after one of their high school football players died. A South Carolina high school football player has died after collapsing at football practice. Star college basketball player collapsing on the court. We want to warn you, the video may be difficult to watch. Florida Gator star Keontae Johnson collapsing during the game. A West Catholic high school student has died after collapsing during a football scrimmage. On mile eight, she suddenly felt fuzzy and blacked out. 17-year-old Ryan Jacobs' heart stopped. Unexpectedly collapsed on the field. Megan went into cardiac arrest. Collapsing during Friday night's football game. Within this video, I have used articles and videos from the mainstream media, as well as investigating medical studies that are also public and information that's provided by government websites. Also, here's a small copyright disclaimer. All of the resources that are used in this video uh, are used for fair use and also I provide links to all the articles and videos that are used within. I'm MC Seeker of Truth. Athletes are collapsing all over the place, um, usually with heart problems. But recently, a lot of high profile footballers have collapsed on the pitch and we need to be asking questions. We need the freedom to be asking these questions. Why is there a sudden rise? in people collapsing in all sports.
rash of high profile scares has led to questions over the state of footballers' health and whether we are seeing more instances of players suffering heart problems. This week brought more disturbing news for football. On Wednesday night, Adam Traor, of Sheriff Tiraspol, fell to the ground whilst clutching his chest during the Champions League game with Real Madrid. The Malian winger remained conscious and was eventually helped off the pitch. Although there have been no further reports on what caused the worrying incident, in England's second tier championship on Tuesday, there were similar fears when Sheffield United player John Fleck crumpled to the ground during a match with Reading. Scotland International received about 10 minutes of medical treatment before being helped off the pitch, also being given oxygen. The 30 year old was taken to hospital but has since been released. On Wednesday, Charlie Wyke of third tier team Wigan Athletic collapsed during training. It's since come out that Charlie hasn't had uh, the VAX. The three cases within a space of a week are merely the latest to trouble football circles. Even bigger news at the end of October involved Barcelona forward Sergio Aguero. The Argentine pulled up during a Liga game against Alaves complaining of severe chest pains and dizziness. Initial reports said that Aguero had been diagnosed with heart arrhythmia and would be out for at least three months. Although it has since been suggested that a 33-year-old may have to retire from football. The rash cases and the context of the pandemic in which they have occurred have thrown up obvious questions regarding the virus and the VAX rolled out to combat it. This week, former England striker Trevor Sinclair openly asked if the VAX was to blame. For anyone who's VAX hesitant, it perhaps seems an obvious question to ask. So Trevor said, Everyone I speak to about these heart problems suffered by footballers which worryingly seems to be happening more regularly. Are they linked to the virus VAX or not? Somebody commented to this tweet. Uh, who knows, Trevor? We wouldn't know because they cut you off on TalkSport for even asking, which is the thing. He was a commentator on, on TalkSport when this happened and he reported live. Well, lots of people wanted to know if he's had the... And then he was cut off. So my question is, is, is why can't we ask questions around this why is it being censored after this happened and after he got a lot of backlash for even you know questioning it uh, and this happening on air um, he put out a tweet and it said i appreciate all the support i've received over the last few days i have three sons that play football for a living Plus, I run my own football academy with 50 plus young adults. So it matters to me from a father and duty of care stance that I ask these important questions. Absolutely, Trevor. And thank you for asking these questions that people don't dare ask. And when they do, apparently they get shut off, um, you know, especially if they, they are on the mainstream media. They, they, get, they get cut off. We need to be asking these questions. And that's what this whole video is about. You know, should we be asking these questions? Do we need a you know independent inquiry um, over this? Because these footballers, these you know famous footballers, famous ex-footballers, or uh, current footballers, are starting to ask these questions and starting to ask who's got the balls to ask this. They know something's wrong. It's not a case of oh you know because people do collapse you know and I will talk about this. People do collapse uh, regularly uh, in sport, you know, on the field. This this does happen. However, just the high profile cases, uh, let alone the um, the frequency of them recently, just goes to show. And obviously, with the you know these these high profile um, people within uh, within the football or soccer um, industry coming forward and putting out these tweets bravely uh, to ask these questions and ask who else is going to ask these questions, that shows that this is not normal. That shows that you know this is this is something different this is this is you know yes it happens it doesn't happen like this and we need to ask questions around it um so not only did uh trevor sinclair uh say about this but also uh, matthew letitiae was another one that is questioning this and he said on his tweets hey at fifth pro which is the fifa twitter handle are you not a little bit concerned about how many of your members are suffering heart problems during matches if you are, what action are you taking on behalf of them? That wasn't the only tweet that Matthew Letizia put out, uh, as well as sharing not only Trevor's and uh, Carla Kame's uh, tweets, 
He also put this very notable tweet out saying, how many more sports people need to collapse on the pitch before an investigation takes place? The goalkeeper for Wolves, Carl Ikeme, also come forward speaking with this tweet saying, is anyone brave enough in football to ask why? Or shall we pretend that nothing's happening? You know, I have to really um, show my adm admiration for these three, you know, high profile ex or current footballers uh, for doing this because they are getting a major back backlash right now, as you could imagine. Um, um, these questions need to be asked. And the, the, you know, the science and data, which is insufficient either side of the fence, is there to say that these questions need to be asked. And just the fact that you're seeing this in the news and you're seeing this on the TV and all footballers, all you know, all pro footballers are terrified right now goes to show you know, that this is not normal, you know, they were all aware, they've been in this profession a very long time, you know, all their life, if not most their life, pretty much, I know about these collapses, you know, um, I've, I've had a family member collapse uh, during a rugby match, I know that this stuff happens, it doesn't happen on this frequency, you don't see it in the mainstream to this frequency, we'll get into that more in, in a little while, but uh, yeah, so big up to um, these three guys talking out. So what is myocarditis or pericarditis? They are conditions where you have inflammation of the heart. And the thing is, is uh, studies have recently shown that one of the adverse side effects you could have from having the jab is, uh, you know, is these conditions. But also, um, also studies have shown recently that you can also have these side effects from catching the virus. Let's focus on the, the fact that this can be an adverse side effect from having the vaccine. If you look at the UK Gov website, it shows this. Information on for healthcare professionals on myocarditis, pericarditis, following having the jab. So they're both inflammatory conditions of the heart. Uh, incidence of, of, of myocarditis is difficult to ascertain as most cases are mild and often not well investigated. There have been a number of reports of cardiac involvement following having the jab, following catching the virus in hospitalised patients. With approximately 18% of hospitalised patients suffering myocardial injury in the acute phase. So is there an association of myocarditis or pericarditis following having the jab. Uh, from an analysis from UK and international data, there's been a signal of increase of cases of myocarditis and pericarditis following having the jab with both Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna jabs. Cases of myocarditis and pericarditis have been reported after having the jab. The existing evidence base shows that most patients with myocarditis post having the jab respond well to standard treatment and prognosis of myocarditis is good however it may have long-term consequences and studies are in progress to further understand the longer term consequences with follow-up at three and six months and this is the thing there is no long-term data okay so this is this this stuff's on you know government websites right now there is no long-term data to analyze and this is the same thing with all of these studies. And, and we'll go more into that. But this is, the, you know, this is on the UK government website. Not to mention, um, you know, with the Moderna jab, you know, uh, multiple countries have stopped giving them to under 30s. Uh, you've got Denmark, Sweden, Finland, France, Germany, I believe even Thailand, you know. They have stopped giving the Moderna vax, uh, the Moderna jab, but they have, um, they are offering the Pfizer as an alternative, um, which still presents the, you know, the the risk of these these adverse side effects. So uh, it's great that they've they've taken precaution with that. Um, however, <laughs> they are throwing caution uh, to the wind by offering their their second, and and obviously they they're not offering the the you know the English alternative in the in the AZ in the AZ jab, um, which <clears throat> mainstream media seems to be reporting is doing better and is safer. So apparently, um, at, at, you know, as studies show so far. So 
what are they saying? Uh, what are the mainstream uh, scientists saying? What are the mainstream media saying around all this? Uh, speaking to the, the Daily Mail, leading cardiologist Professor Guido P Pieles has argued that the recent cluster of heart scare cases among footballers is more a coincidence than anything else. <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> um, he says... I don't think that we can say this is suddenly increasing. I don't think it is increasing, particularly in football, he said. Um, we'll get more into the figures around that in a minute. Footballers are certainly uh, not the athletes that have the highest volume and intensity of training. Endurance runners, Tour de France cyclists and rowers, they are much longer they, they train much longer hours. It cannot be said that in the last year or two years that they train more, but over the last 10 years, that is true. Um... So footballers are have a much higher intensity of training these days, and that's something that this article will go on to say as another possible excuse um, for this happening. Uh, the first one you can see there is, is a, a professor saying that this is mere coincidence. <laughs> OK, all right, then. Uh, and then they, you know, the next thing is the game has got a lot faster, but also people are fitter. You play football in Premier League, you have done since seven or eight years old. So basically, they're saying that demand on the human body to be a professional footballer is much higher these days. And this is a another thing that's been said is with uh, having these these risk factors. Um, also adding intense physical exertion, as in with being a pro footballer, for instance, it is possibly being a factor in, you know, the, the, these circumstances. So with the risk from, you know, having the jab and that uh, giving you, you know, an inflamed heart, let's say, um, then having your job to physically exert to the excess um, this could be then a contributing factor of course to to the circumstances of these 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 sports personalities the uh, you know these people collapsing so uh, perhaps it is less likely or less prevalent in people that don't have uh, to don't don't have to physically exert themselves in such excess as you know these these professional athletes and so you know you may see these cases more often uh, in these people that uh, put this extra pressure on their heart whether it be that they've contracted a virus that makes it worse or whether they've put something in their body that can make it worse you know you know these people are, are perhaps more susceptible to having these adverse side effects and you know they're saying People should not point the finger at um, these jabs. For me to say the, the jabs could be implicated would be the most ir irresponsible thing in the world. And I just don't get this because you just don't have the data to say that. And there's so many people and, well, basically that is the norm, isn't it, uh, right now? And I just I think we should be asking questions. So uh, he, in pointing to it, another uh, reason being the intensity of the modern game, demands placed on players at the highest level, which I've just said about how, you know, the, you know, the demands on being a pro athlete are, are greater these days. OK, so then you've got these uh, recent posts and this recent information that's been going around. Some of them are saying 108 footballers, uh, according to FIFA, have had these adverse reactions, these cardiac events, etc. Um, I looked into that. There is no definitive uh, evidence for that. So I, you know, apart from obviously just mentioning it there, I'm just mentioning that this is stuff that's been floating around. So people are saying 108, right? Okay. I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to go with the evidence that I have seen with my own eyes. Uh, so they're saying that, that, and there's articles going around about a five-fold increase as well, which is something also cannot be verified. And these things, you know, that are going around these articles and, and, and whatnot, you know, people are, are sharing them, trying to, to raise uh, awareness 
of this issue, which is great, but don't do it on evidence that can't be verified. And please leave in the comments if you do come across verifiable evidence of these claims. Um, I'd love to see that. place still isn't known. Well, you might be wondering how someone in such great shape could suffer cardiac arrest. It's a rare thing that happens. Absolutely not. She felt like she was in the best shape of her life. That's incredible. Player down. Something happened to one of the referees. We've had a, a heartbreaking situation here. I've got uh, various articles sent to me to try and <laughs> tell me what I was looking at is rubbish and all of them I have problems with so what I was sent when I was talking about uh, the link between and myocarditis uh, <laughs> one of the the main documents I was sent was this uh, from nature.com uh, 8th of October so you know we're talking well over a month ago this was published heart inflammation risk from Pfizer V is very low and this is what a lot of the studies are saying, but again, without any long-term data, especially when you're considering uh, double v you know, subjects. But anyway, two studies from Israel, um, and, and by the way, you know, they are one of the first to have uh, rolled out their, their, their V program, and one of the first to be offering double Vs. So... Two studies from Israel quantify the risk of myocarditis following having the Pfizer shot, with one suggesting the chance of uh, developing the condition is about 1 in 50,000. This is subjective, and I will tell you why. Um, so this was sent to me, a very interesting article, and we need to take stock of this because this is, is research. You know, where there is no research out there, this is one study that is being done. So I can't underestimate that. Um, and basically they're saying that the risk of uh, developing you know inflammation of the heart muscle um, is very low uh, that's the main takeaway that this study shows um, a study from one, more than five million people in in Israel 
that had received the Pfizer um, 136 developed myocarditis. It has the actual, um, it has uh, the, <laughs> the, the studies below. Okay, so what you can tell from these studies. So if we look at the first one, um, the first one talks about uh, this one is, is this one was done in, in Israel um, and it was done amongst millions of people, 5.1 million people that are within a health program. Right. And what it talks about is, is uh through these people so if you can you know obviously trust these figures um what it talks about is obviously having a comparison and um doing doing this investigation on people that have had at uh, as it states at least one dose so i should imagine actually especially with the timing of this actually you know there could be a lot of double vaxxed in there but um, mainly, um, these are um, the you know the, these are subjects that have had one um, dose. So basically, the, the whole investigation is subjective. In fact, it's not very long. There you go. That's the end of it. There is no. This is the actual uh, apparent you know medical you know publication of. Um, this investigation and there is nothing there there's an abstract abstract background that gives some figures there's a method there and it's from december 2020 to may so again um, that doesn't actually capture because i think it was february where they started rolling out in israel um the you know and, and fact check this um they started rolling out the, the you know the second um the second jab there so if you're talking may february march april may um you know you can still get a, a you know a decent uh overall um mix there but let's just say if they're doing 5.1 million people there is no data here a medical article uh, that's telling you um, what their findings were, if you can believe them, but 5.1 million Israelis fully immunized against coronavirus. Fully, it says had been fully been immunized. That's the background. It's, that's, this is misleading because I thought there was 5.1 million people that they had looked into. No. Um, let's go on to see how many they have. They've not told you how many people that they've tested. They've just they, they've not told you how many people are in this. Uh, so uh, there's so many subjective issues, and I found this through all of these articles. Um, you know, and they're saying that um, people with at least one dose. Okay, well, it turns out that uh, actually the second dose um, seems to be. Um, seems to be after people have the second dose that it, it ramps up a lot. The conclusion, okay, the incidence of myocarditis, although low, increased after receipt of the Pfizer, particularly after the second dose among young male recipients. There you go. Um, the clinical pre presentation um, of myocarditis after vaccination was usually mild. So that's the, that's uh, the, the, the first the first uh, study that they're using here in the other one was Israel care organization, which is this one. Again, it's talking about the the possibility of you know, getting myocarditis in an inflamed heart after having the, the vac. And they say, <clears throat> basically they did a, an investigation of people who have had at least one dose again, right? But the conclusion, among patients in a large Israeli healthcare system who had received at least one dose of the Pfizer vaccine, estimated incidence of myocarditis was 2.13 cases in 100,000. The highest incident was among male patients between the ages of 16 and 29. Remember when I said that um, certain countries have stopped giving the Moderna vaccine, they should stop giving all vaccines to under 30s. You know, I think that this is something that needs independent study. 
you know, without drawing conclusions, I'm giving, you know, my analysis of these medical reports. Um, I'm no expert, but um, there is glaring, um, there is, you know, there's glaring inconsistencies with these uh, medical reports and, you know, a, a real review, a real independent review um, needs to be conducted. Uh, so this is the main article that was put forward, you know, or the medical study around this um, to try and, you know, say that, oh, yeah, but, you know, the risk is higher from, you know, the risk is higher from contracting the, the disease um, to, you know, the risks that you, you know, and studies have shown this. No, there's no long term data. So it's not irrelevant. You know, these studies are important. Um, <laughs> how much stock I give into them, how controlled or manipulated they could be, I don't know. But um, you know, they're certainly worth taking stock of. But uh, this is by no means definitive. <clears throat> so you've got that. And then you have, you know, this whole football situation. You have the whole, you know, these people saying five-fold increase, 108 people, FIFA, this, that, and the other. Again, as I said, you, you know, I can't verify that. So what information could I find or what information was sent to me, in fact? Oh, I'm sure all of you out there listening to this love a fact-checking site. But um, actually... We couldn't easily find a fact checking site, um, at least <laughs> originating from an English language speaking country that wanted to deal with this at this time. But there is a German fact checking site that has and uh, it says, <laughs> you know, no, it doesn't prove a 50 fold increase in cardiac arrests in football. A statement that I've not because um, I, I couldn't verify that I've not stood behind. Um, that doesn't change the facts that I do have. However, this article goes on to show that this uh, misinformation, or as it seems, being spread around is in misinformation, misleading claims, whatnot. Again, let me state that spreading things that you think might be true um, can really damage um, your real questions and I think that sometimes misinformation is peppered in disguised as things that you think might help you and you spread it and it makes you look like an idiot you know what I mean um, and then all of our questions for a lot of people become null and void on there you have where they talk about the FIFA register for sudden deaths and cardiac arrests so this is where we're going to find out ultimately the uh, ultimately the information that you know will verify all of this right all of these footballers apparently dropping down dead um so this is what sent to me as proof and then you you know you click on the site so you know if you look for fifa um you know sudden deaths and stuff you know oh you might come across this site but actually it's very hard to come across um and, and if you do get this far um, you will find a video of some, you know, the, the, t the professor Tim Mayer explaining about this registry uh, from the university that collects the data for this information. Right. And he gives his information. And there is a this is the official registry. I think it's based in uh, Holland or Germany. Um, <laughs> double check that. But anyway, that's where the information goes. But this information you cannot publicly access so all of the information is being sent to this uh, data collector uh, university and yeah so you, you, you can't publicly access that information hmm okay fair enough or well, not fair enough so that's where this information is collected right so then it goes on to say that uh, all of these posts were being put around on Facebook and other social media sites. And um, is it Dr. Egger, right? Someone the, that runs the team um, from the university that collects this information. They cross-checked the, the Facebook information, if you could say that, with their own information. They uh, removed any... Um, 
any cases that uh, were were that did, weren't relevant basically and they come up with the figures but the <laughs> So they made a table. So they're not going to show us the data that they've got. You know, this is really suspicious to me. But they can't have a, ta a table. They said, oh, these are the figures we've got. They're not going to show us the information they've got. But they, they can't have a table. Uh, but this is from the 28th of October. So we're talking a month ago now. Uh, and, and for which we all know there's been lots of... Um, there's been there's been a lot a lot happening in the last month um regarding this topic but um they work out that uh they give us a table that 14 people have had a sudden cardiac arrest or sudden death um in in the fifa leagues uh, they work out as 14 which works out as below average in fact um i know this is not correct at least up to date for uh mid november because <laughs> i can name 14 people within pro leagues um certainly from that list of 40 in fact uh, adding uh, the the uh, extras that certainly have um had uh, sudden cardiac events since uh, 28th of november so i mean th these figures are not up to date uh, part of my issue is they're they're not backing up with information. They're giving you a table and saying, this is what we found. Where's the transparency here? Why wouldn't they give transparency over these cases? I, I do not know. But anyway, that's all you can find. A German fact checking site as a link to a uh, apparent FIFA statistic site. Um, if you guys can find any information on the apparent 108, um, please let me know. I know it's a lot more than thought 14 here, but they've removed um, <laughs> they've removed uh, officials and you know. Okay, so we're not talking about that. You know, with the 40 people, I'm talking about 40 athletes. Uh, they've removed everyone but pro players in in FIFA. I don't trust this table. I want to see more data. That's not definitive uh, for me. And it's only up to the end of October, as I've said. So, yeah, it basically needs more data. And the thing is with the, you know, the last article, um, I didn't show it, but um, with these, these case studies, these medical case studies, I didn't show it. But one of the main things it said as a conclusion was we need more data, more data needed. Uh, a cardiologist at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas, says more data are needed to compare the risk of myocarditis between vaccinated and unvaccinated people under 12. But Bokert says it's possible that increased risk of myocarditis is clustered around puberty and adolescence. And this is one of the main um, kind of recurring factors that, that needs to be in, looked into um, is young people are, you know, seeming to have these um this seems to be prevalent in, in young people right now uh, and that is what's alerting so with, with the sports you know um, most most of these athletes are under 30 and they're having these problems and um, so you know this could be an area that's in the public domain where it's easily seen publicly that this sort of stuff is going on and, and you know with high profile footballers collapsing all the time um you know so yeah basically the the conclusion is more data is needed and this is the point that the main point that i'm making here something's going on something needs to be looked into there's not enough data either side of the fence so one more thing that i you know want to talk about um i did see an article this article here about one of the athletes i just want to sp uh, put a spotlight on them um florian de Guri world record holder in static breath holding free diving diagnosed with myopericarditis after Pfizer vac possible end of career how messed up is that you know um this this, <laughs> this guy's career has been shattered florian degori currently the world's top static breath hold free diver has been diagnosed with myocarditis and pericarditis 40 days following his second dose with the pfizer he is known for the fact he officially held his breath for 10 minutes and 30 seconds boy that's long <laughs> anyway 
the elite freediver of French origin and based in Thailand experienced a significant decrease in his breath hold ability and went to a cardiologist who told him that it's a common side effect with the Pfizer vaccine. Damn, imagine your career being ruined like that. Um, basically, he gave a, a statement here. Uh, they just just want to share my annoying experience after that and perhaps some testimonials similar stories around free divers did you get better after my second dose i noticed that my heart rate was higher than normal and my breath hold ca uh, capacities went down significantly so he went after 40 days after his second jab um, to see another cardiologist and got diagnosed with myocarditis, pericarditis and trivial mitral regurgitation, which basically is an inflammation of the heart muscles caused by the immune system and some tiny leaks of blood from the valves that no longer close properly. I'm now struggling to reach eight minutes breath hold, 150 D DYN, and I even have strong urge to breathe doing 40 meter dives. 30% decrease on my diving performance, roughly. <sighs> yeah. You know, I feel bad for that guy. That's his whole career. Basically, this this whole situation needs investigating. It needs an independent, independent inquiry. Um, we need to make some noise. Um, you know, these people being affected. Um, we've got these articles coming out. They need to be put in the spotlight. Um, our health secretary um, needs to call an independent study on this uh, footballers need to speak out sports people athletes need to make this known we all need to know this is happening we all need to, you know th this is happening okay um what the cause of it is i'm not going to say categorically but there needs to be independent inquiry on this there needs to be studies on this this needs to be known this needs to be heard this needs to not be censored this needs to not be cut off I am going to leave you now with a, a short clip from uh, GB News, where a consultant cardiologist, um, you know, this is the the only well-known uh, news outlet that's speaking about this and it is letting people talk on their stream because, uh, you know, elsewhere it is censored. And I do not see a possible reason why this conversation that could, could could not be had out in public. I do have concerns that the media and science community may try to downplay all of this um, with trying to blame um, contracting the virus as uh, contracting the disease as the, the reasoning be beyond the sudden spike of collapses over the last six months. Um, <clears throat> knowing that, of course, that these uh, have become more prevalent um, after the double V rollouts, um, or even that they might uh, chuck in a new emerging factor to try and explain away uh, these, these rises in these cases, or even the effectiveness of these jabs. So much that we don't know about the new coronavirus variant Omicron, and while some medical experts are worried it could be vaccine resistant, they're encouraging people to be patient and not panic. So, uh, guys, I'll leave you with this clip. Thank you for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, and share. Seeing this abstract publication circulation, I was concerned about it um, for a number of reasons. So, first and foremost, we have to understand that the, there's been a shift in understanding of heart disease over the years. That we know now it's a chronic inflammatory condition that is exacerbated by something called insulin resistance, which we've talked about on the show before, which is related to poor lifestyle. Um, now, what this abstract has shown, what this research has shown, is that markers associated with increasing the risk of heart attack and probably even progression of underlying heart disease in people who have already got some heart disease has been significantly increased risk from 11% at five years, risk of heart attack, to 25%. Now, that's a huge increase. If this is true, then it's very concerning indeed. But in, in medicine, in good science, we, we never rely on one study. We need to replicate these findings. However, what I will share with you today on GB News is a few days ago after this was published, um, somebody from a very prestigious British institution, cardiology department, researcher, a whistleblower, if you like, contacted me to say that the researchers in this department had found something similar within the coronary arteries linked to the vaccine, inflammation from imaging studies around the coronary arteries. And um, they had a meeting, and these researchers at the moment have decided they're not going to publish their findings because they are concerned about losing research money 
from the drug industry. Now, this person was very upset about it, um, and I wanted to obviously share this on GB News today. What I would say is that we then, knowing this information, which is very concerning, Stephen Gundry's paper in circulation, and also anecdotal evidence. I mean, I have a lot of interaction with the cardiology community across the UK, and anecdotally, I've been getting told by colleagues that they are seeing younger and younger people coming in with heart attacks. Now, what does this mean in terms of the data? We have to put the jigsaw for the pieces together. We know since July, there's been almost 10,000 excess non-COVID deaths. Um, and most of those, or significant proportion of those, are being driven by circulatory disease, in other words, heart attack and stroke. There's been a 30% increase in people having, uh, dying at home. And often these are because of cardiac arrest. Of course, this is also something close to my heart because my own father is one of those statistics. He had a cardiac arrest at home July the 26th, so when these, figure, these data, since this data has been collected. So where do we go from here? I think the signal is quite strong. I personally um, think that this needs investigating. So I think the Joint Committee of Vaccines and Immunization should absolutely investigate this. Um, I think that the researchers... I really hope that they take a look in the mirror and realize the ones from where this whistleblower's come from, um, they realize that they should publish this stuff because their duty primarily is to patients, not the interest of the drug, drug industry. And I think the third thing, and this has been a discussion that's been ongoing, I think now it's high time that policymakers around the world put an end to the mandates. Because I think if this signal is strong and if it's correct, then um, history will not be on their side and the public will not forgive them for it, Alex. So um, this is very concerning. It needs investigating, and, uh, and hopefully it can be resolved very soon. I think the other thing to mention as well, we shouldn't ignore the other possibilities of why there's been an increase in heart attack. So part of the stuff I've done in my research and analysis over the years is looking at the lifestyle factors that drive heart disease and heart attacks. And the other things that we know have also happened which also I'm sure a contributing factor, is people's diets got worse in general over lockdown. And there was pandemic stress. Chronic psychological stress is a significant risk factor. So if it wasn't for this data that's come out recently, I would have attributed most of these excess deaths from heart disease to those lifestyle factors. Now the vaccine has been thrown in to the equation, we can't ignore it.